Hello, Igor. Could you give an introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure. Hello, my name is Igor. I am a student of the real world based in Moscow, Russia, and I am a video editor and content creator. Video editor and content creator. Okay. How did you find out about the real world and what led you to joining? Well, I found out about Hustlers University way back uh, when I was watching Andrew Tate videos, way back when he called out Jake Paul. And at first, as I think many people, I was very skeptical. Like, how can you invest 50 bucks and make thousands? But when I finished uh, the Matrix University and understood, okay, I don't have a job. This degree is not really doing anything for me. Can't uh, get hired by anyone. Uh, and I just had to feed myself, feed my family. So I decided, okay, sure, I'll invest 50 bucks, see what it, where it takes me. And I never regretted it since. Best decision I made. Okay. Then you joined, you said you done video editing and content creation. Did you do any campuses prior to getting into that? Or did you just jump straight into that? I jumped straight into the AI and CC campus because throughout since I was 14, I was working on film edits and YouTube. So I think I thought if I know this, maybe I can learn something new and work in this niche. Maybe I can be better at it. So that was my mindset going in. Mm -hmm. But I did go into the freelance campus to find clients because I can't make money without clients mm -hmm. through video editing as well. So I visited that. And currently I'm in four campuses, I think. Cool. Yeah, no, three the main ones still be in content creation and client acquisition, I presume. Okay. Now, what was the process like for actually reaching out to clients and trying to land a deal? At first, it was very difficult because I didn't know how to speak in a sense. I didn't know the strategy of uh, selling to a client. So I think that's the most important thing that the real world taught me is how to sell how to present yourself, how to promote your product, and uh, through reaching out just constantly and getting rejected a lot, I landed my first client, which was not an editing client, but a uh, filming client, through using the lessons in the client acquisition campus of saying uh, and presenting in a specific way, being confident with your words, and that landed me my first ever uh, client. And through that, I was just checking every time uh, whether my reach outs and my prospects and my words were better. So just getting better all the time. And that became easier. Now it's more like second nature. Okay. Uh, I would like to know some more since you did have previous experience with video editing. Did you actually end up learning anything new from the content creation and AI campus? The main thing I learned was how fast you can edit. So I was very amazed at how uh, the captains and the students and the professor in the real world can edit with such speed and finesse. Uh, I'm used to editing long-term content, so short films, documentaries, and how I was taught to just quickly edit the hotkeys, the, the speed, and just put out content faster and faster. That, I think, changed the way I viewed content creation completely. So I was very amazed. And I think one of the very most important things, because I also teach video editing uh, as a spare sort of side hustle, uh, the lessons from the real world and how quickly the campuses taught me how to edit helped me teach other students how to edit as well very faster. So I got paid even more. Okay, very solid. And then how much did you actually earn from the client you acquired? Uh, the first client? Yes. Oh, sure. I made uh, $120 first mm -hmm. flat, and uh, that was from the first client. Mm -hmm. And then how did things progress after as you landed more? Uh, as I learned more, I just reached out way more, and I went from making about $100, $200 every month to making in a month $500 per month through just content creation and editing. So that's just call it call outs, prospecting and editing. Uh, but through the real world and through the client acquisition and the business mastery campus, I've opened sort of a 
not really you can say a business, but a hustle of flipping. I understood I have way too many things in my house, in my family's house. And this is, I think, where uh, running two businesses, in a sense, got me more successful. So the business also is making me an extra $500 a month. So now I'm making $1,000 a month, which is ridiculous. In two months, mm-hmm. so completely just unbelievable to me. And uh, currently working on better clients, bigger deals, uh, more prospecting to get that double. I think in this month, I'll be may- maybe triple this income. I have a bunch of prospects that are very interested. Cool. All right. Very good. And uh, I'm wondering, what's the economic situation like in Russia then? I don't even know what the average wage is of, uh, you said you're in Moscow? Yeah, I'm in, in the capital. In Moscow here, average wage is a uh, thousand US. That's if you're full-time working like banker or investors. And so that's uh, fairly heavy, but the it's, it's pretty fine. The issue is really with entrepreneurship because of the situation in the politics. Uh, you can't really access anything. So me getting the real world was only accessible through crypto. Uh, you can't use any cards. You can't get any passports. You can't get anything. Only if you either have friends in high places, maybe you can get some, or you have a, I don't know, a foreign girlfriend, maybe you can have access to that. That helped. And, um, Mm -hmm. but it's finding ways. So I put myself a task. I want to join the real world. So I found a way to do it. Okay. Sold it. Uh, let's see then how different is the average day now compared to before you joined the real world? It's hectic, but I think I enjoy it more. So I have less free time. Uh, I work pretty much from 9 to around 1 a.m. sometimes. Depends on the edit. Uh, I train every single day. I used to be very, very skinny. Uh, work almost. Like, I didn't really work. So I was waiting for long projects, which didn't really pay much. But now it's fun. It's exciting. It's uh, great to tune in every day and talk to people in the real world, communicate with professionals, with the professors, with the captains, get feedback from the work that I do, actual real feedback instantly, aside from waiting for your professor in university somewhere for like two days to check your homework. No, here it's great. You have instant communication, great competition, and it forces it's like a video game in a sense uh you, that you really enjoy playing and upgrading your character and leveling up so it's fun nice and what would you say were the biggest challenges you faced when you're actually implementing lessons from the real world i think it's not giving up because i i think everyone ended up with situations where you learn the lesson you try to do it and the client says no we're not interested or they just don't answer and the first, when you're just starting out, the first thing comes to your mind, oh, quit. It doesn't work. No, it's persevering and trying it again and again, reaching out a hundred more times until you get that client or finessing and fixing something in the way you speak or in your, uh, in your copywriting, maybe take more lessons, revisit the lessons. So it's continually, continuously working towards your goals, not stopping ever. That's the most difficult part for me. Yeah. And now it's something you've overcome? I think overcome, I think I overcame the fear of speaking to people. Like even doing this interview, I, before the real world, I was terrified of uh, speaking to just like anyone really do. I became more extroverted through speaking to clients, uh, speaking to people I don't know, or speaking to very rich people who are trying to you're trying to get some sort of investment or money into your short film and this is it's terrifying to ask for hundreds of thousands of dollars for your movie so that teaches you uh that, i think that's the main thing i overcame is speaking to people mm-hmm. okay and you said for your movie so are you planning on making a movie of your own in future i already made three movies uh oh. that's what i was speaking to you about uh, that I worked on stuff before the real world. Uh, so I already did three festival movies, but they're not really commercial movies. So that's why I'm, I went away from that because that doesn't make you money. 
So it's more of a, it's more of a flexing type thing. So you made a movie, it's cool in the cinematography landscape, but it's more important to actually make ads and work on short form content for social media nowadays. If you want to eat food or as a, as a basic. Mm -hmm. All right. Makes sense. And what was your life actually heading then before you joined the real world? What kind of plans did you have and how have they changed since? You know, I, I think I didn't have a plan before that. Now that I look back three months in the real world, I didn't really have a plan. I, I was just focused on finishing university at the time. And I thought I was going to get a job in the filmmaking space, whether it be in television or whether it be just teaching at schools. I didn't really have a plan, but now uh, being forced to look at reality and joining, I think plans drastically changed <laughs> to mm -hmm. for the better. So I didn't really have a one. Good. Good that, yeah, uh, how much life has changed since joining. That's great to hear. Let's see, since you're on this trajectory then, where do you see your life heading in the short term, medium term and the long term? I think in the short term, term, I see myself making around 3000 a month uh, through straight content creation and my side businesses as well. Uh, seeing myself in way better shape than I am now, even though I'm training every day. <clears throat> I want to get in way better shape, become a bit bigger. So I'm still on the skinny side. Uh, I'm planning on opening, turning this content creation thing into a business to an actual uh, profitable, more like huge business in my local country, because with AI and CC, what is taught in the real world, there is nothing like this in Russia completely. No one is doing this. And it really helps because all the business meetings I'm in, people are saying, okay, well, you're now the, uh, the set price. You can ask for any money you want because you're setting the price and then people will follow you. So don't miss this opportunity. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking of, start making it on a more massive scale and helping out local companies as well because everything is very centralized here and i think i wish to support my country i wish to uh support uh the economic situation here wish to support myself and my family and i think also a very important thing is being closer to god i recently found christianity and uh, slowly learning that so that helped me massively in life uh, with my relationships, with my family, with my business. Uh, I think that is in the something in the long term I'm going to focus on is more sort of getting better, closer to God with myself. So, but with the money, just scale and scale, continue. And, right. if something, and then invest it, then go to the other campuses. So just all the campus. So I will study all the campuses, hopefully in the mm -hmm. next five years, maybe. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, since you said you found Christianity, is that because of Andrew Tate that you got more religious or different reason? It was a combination of both. Uh, I was raised Christian. I was baptized, but I went away from that due to, I think, misguided friend groups. As I think a lot of teenagers go through this, you go out to like clubs, do something degenerate. But recently, I've uh, rekindled my relationship with my grandma a lot uh, due to me taking care of her, due to her old age, and I've listened to her a lot. She's very religious. And I've realized a lot of truth in the religion, not necessarily in a sense like you have to follow it, but it's like you if you follow it, your life will be better. Just try it out. She was very suggestive with it, not forceful. And at the same time, through listening to Andrew Tate's content, and his uh, very passionate beliefs and passionately speaking about Islam and Christianity, I think that also helped because it opened up a different view of the world. You don't have to only strive for materialistic things, but also uh, spiritual things to be better as a man. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very solid to have. Now, for all this, I couldn't really tell they have a Russian accent. So what's the background there? Did you go to some kind of international school? Were you 100% raised in Russia or somewhere else? Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> it's um, My dad decided to play, play a practical joke, I think. That's the story I tell. He huh. well, I was born and he came up to me 
when I was two, and he said, my son will speak English. And my mom was very confused. She's like, why? He's like, no. And this was uh, early 2000s. So it was back then where the language, it's like now when AI and coding is more important, English was more important back then. So he said, no, my son will speak English because it's important. He will have more contacts. He will be smarter. So English was actually my first language. I didn't know Russian until I was seven years old. It was very confusing. <laughs> so that's why I don't have an accent. I had, a, I had an English accent when I was in school, which is ridiculous for, for the teachers. Wow. Huh. So born in Russia, but raised with English. And then only when you went to school, did you start learning Russian? Yep. Huh. Haven't heard that before, but fair enough. I'm sure that will serve you well in life. So, completely fair. Well, it got me here. If I didn't have yep. English, I wouldn't have joined. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Cool. So, that's pretty much most of my questions for this interview. So, we can wrap up with for people who aren't sure about joining the real world because they're thinking it could be a scam. What advice would you have to them? I think the well, I, I I can have two answers to this because as a person who also thought it was too good to be true, not necessarily a scam, but too good to be true, I m myself will say that the results speak for themselves. All the students, the two hundred thousand students, that are currently bettering their lives because of a revolutionary, revolutional instrument like this. Uh, speaks for itself. You invest fifty dollars which everyone can make. And I myself as a Russian, just average Russian citizen who has no access to any US dollars or credit cards or any foreign apps now because everything is closed. I found a way to access the real world and make more money than I've ever made. And I'm only 23. So I think if you think it's a scam, then you're doing the service to yourself to not at least try it because you can always cancel you can always make a decision again it's all right but as my mom said don't knock it till you try it that's what i would say fair enough all right and now if you want to find out more about you or contact you why can they do so they can contact me the main uh, way to contact me is through youtube i have a channel um with the same name, Igor Onashkin or uh, Nanojol, spelled lower caps. Uh, I post regular content there through using AI and showing my short films. Uh, if anyone needs any editing, that's the main way they can reach out to me. I have all my contacts and all my other social medias there. All right, we'll add that to the description of the video. And Igor. Thank you for coming on and doing the interview. We can do a follow-up in future. Let me know when things scale for you. You said you're predicting 3,000 per month in the short term. So we'll have to see in about three to four months if that's come true. I mean, in three to four months, surely you can be doing 5K a month. That's, uh, that's well, You put me on the spot there. now. <laughs> yeah, that's about to go. All right, I'll try better. I'll try better. And we'll, we'll see. Then do a follow-up, hold you accountable and document your progress so i look forward to that and wish you all the best until then yeah thank you for having me great opportunity it was pleasant to talk to you have a great day or evening i don't know where you're from so have a great rest of the day i'll put it that thank way you. thank you thank you so much